I want you to uh, give a welcome to Chef Silvana Salsita Esparza. You. you know, I often wonder what my father thought the American sueño was as he stood with his feet as Juarez, when he was looking over at El Paso, right? U.S. citizens should have an equal opportunity the world's highest standards of living. So he left his family without papers, without money, and he went to Los Angeles as a baker, but he worked as a mason. Eventually, anchor baby got him some papers. He, went, he sent for his wife and the rest of his family, and he became a baker in Los Angeles. It was at a bakery in Los Angeles called Flaky Pastry, where that oven right there came from that man standing behind him as a gift to open a Mexican bakery in Merced, California. I come from generations of bakers. We go back to the 1200s as bakers from Spain to Mexico, La Azteca, La Mexicana, Pan Mix, 20 bakeries in the San Joaquin Valley without education, third and sixth grade education at the most. This is my cousin Johnny still doing it. You know, uh, I'm still doing it. It's in her blood. This is what we do. So my father fulfilled his sueño americano. He gave us a good life. And I was torn. What, am, what is my sueño? Am I a Mexicana or am I an Americana? I grew up in the farming communities. I grew up preaching to people on Saturday mornings I grew, that was my education. The world was going to end. I didn't get ASU. So I went to SCI. I did get to ASU, I have to say, but I got there as a working, serving ASU people. I was working class. I worked at University Club. I ran that place. I became a rock star of ASU from 95 to 2000. They gave me my own ASU email address. <laughs> and I don't work for ASU. I pushed so many dishes up there, I said, enough of this. Adios ASU, I went to Mexico, 2000 to 2001, and I went to fulfill a void that I had right here. I lost my mother to cancer, and I went to study with fancy chefs. Instead, I studied with women like her. Look at this. How can I not do what I do? These women here gave a woman that looks like me their most cherished, family secrets, their recipes, their style. They took me into their homes, into their businesses, and they shared with me because I convinced them. I told them, I said, in Los Estados Unidos, they don't have mole. They have chimichangas, <laughs> and they have yellow cheese, and they get their salsa verde from a jar, and their tortillas from the freezer. So I don't cook iguana but I cook with the essence and the love that this woman gave me. That's what feeds me today too, as much as being a Jehovah's Witness, not anymore, and a baker's daughter. I come back to Phoenix again. I could have gone anywhere, I came here. My feet are here, my heart is here, my soul is here. I feel like I am a true Phoenix, like the namesake of the city. I came here with a purpose to change perception. When I was in Mexico, these ladies, I said, look, the chimichangas, blah, blah, blah. I promise you this, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna change perceptions of Mexican culture and Mexican food through my food. So they said, orale. And yeah, I've been getting accolades ever since. You know why? Because I serve the real deal. You don't see chips and salsa. You don't see chimichangas. You, you do see gringos, de no de tortilla. You do, you do see my family, lots of family. The, see, my family as a lesbian, I have to tell you, you have to learn how to make family out there. You make them at work, you make them in the community. In my case, it was a gay community. So when I get into a kitchen, we become family. And when you become family, that's when you make magic. That's when you have 20, 21 years later, I still have people from ASU. They're down here in Phoenix now. We're still there. We're still doing it together like a familia. That is what we do. 
So I'm doing all these accolades. I got a couple of kids to raise. Take it. I raise a nephew, send him to culinary school. Um, I'm busy, busy, busy. I open a restaurant in Scottsdale. I walk away from a restaurant in Scottsdale. I open up a lot more restaurants. And still, that's not enough, is it? So I'm reaching all these heights, all these accolades. I'm having fun, but it's still not enough. So it's kind of like a time to go back to Mexico moment, you know? And I realized that in order for the family legacy on a personal note, I have to take what I was giving for my family, and I disguised it in my own way, but it's still the same thing. And A, A, S, U, orale. But you have to give it, and you have to give it to the next generation. So it's vámonos a la familia. After being alone and traveling and then coming back, it's the family that's important to me. My blood family. I told you I've had lots of families, but my blood family. So I went, that's the kid I raised. This girl's been with me since she was 14 in the kitchen. She's now 19 and pregnant, but we'll talk about that later. Um, but she's, the, she's better than me. And I'm going to be, I guess, a tia abuela pretty soon. I'll have a kid right now. But all these are my family members. I got a, a nephew at um, uh, Johnson and Wales. This kid, by default, he landed here. He's the nephew I never knew. Now he's a, a restaurateur. OK, so now I got the family. What's next? Well, this is what's next. CCAP. It is a program that works in the high schools. So it should be in every freaking high school, but it's not. And it's, you go to one of these, I, I, they asked me to be a judge, and then that was like hook, line, and sinker. I'm hooked. But it's serving underserved youth and giving them an opportunity and scholarships. So I get to plant the seed. Right now I'm telling them, hey, you need to be a Mexican chef, OK? I know you're going to be a chef because you're here, but you need to be a Mexican chef. You know, but <laughs> yeah, I don't have to say anything, do I? In 2010, SB 1070 happens. That was my going back to Mexico, aquí, because it was a wake-up call. You know, I vote. I support the politicians I like. I do the things that I think are right. But is it enough? I have a voice. Somebody told me early on in my career, Savannah, with great success comes great responsibility. I don't know if I'm very successful or not, but I seem to have a voice because people come a-knocking and they ask. So I speak. And um, SB 1070 didn't feel right to me, but what am I doing, what is my community doing to warrant that or to combat that? So I spoke of painting walls and I convinced artists and we took it to the streets and our voices on the walls. And guess what? Now it's a freaking tourist att attraction. There used to be drunks and hookers on 16th Street. Now there's tourists with their cameras walking around. You know, I've had to fix other people's potholes because I don't want anybody to fall and get hurt. 16th Street has reached out and planted seeds. We plant them in CCAP. We plant them with art. We don't get graffiti anymore on 16th Street like we used to. Instead, like I said, we get the tourism. The restaurants on 16th Street are seeing, are seeing a surge. The housing, they used to be very dilapidated crack houses, are now becoming these cute little trendy houses, mid-century, by the way. There are tumbleweeds, homeless centers. So we've been working with different members of the community all near 16th Street. And the one that's near and dear to my heart it's the Children's Crisis Nursery that's on near 16th Street. Uh, what we've done there is we've joined with Calle 16 and a lowrider club, Viejitos Car Club, and Barrio Cafe, and we have a yearly toy drive. And the toy drive is an amazing thing. What happens is um, all the lowrider community comes out, 
and they get to come to 16th Street. Usually they're on the west side, they're on the south side, but they come to 16th Street, so now they're among the murals. They get to see, orale, Dolores Huerta. You know what happened, SB 1070 in protest, what happens? Thank you for signing that law, Jan, because it gave us community, it gave us friendships that are now a lifelong. The artists that came out of that, are, are, Caritas says, are now showing all over the country. One of them was just at the, has a permanent piece at the museum in Oklahoma. Calle 16, SB 1070. You have, there's, look at that. Isn't that, that's cross-cultural art. That is, so you got the Mexicanos coming out of the neighborhood, looking at the cars, going, ¿Qué es eso? Mira, nomás que unos carros, my, my daddy had one back in Mexico. And then, you get the lowriders coming in and going, eh, it's not so bad over here. <laughs> and then you get you folks over there like, wow, with the camera, right? It's, <laughs> and, and who wins? The kids with the toys, right? Those toys are not just for the holidays, they're for birthdays, for a, they're new at the crisis center. If you've never been there, it's a beautiful thing. Um, <clears throat> but they also have them when a kid is feeling down, they'll bring out a toy. And they have that because lowriders on 16th Street did that. Think about that for a minute. So it's changing perceptions, right? Those kids have been influenced by the art. They've been influenced by coming out and being part of the community. We're happy to have them there. We're happy to share with them. We take them in the cars and turn on the sirens and make them go up and down, and they go, ah, please don't do that. <laughs> you know, I walk out, and there's an artist talking to a bunch of kids, something I can't do. But he's going, hey, listen up, little homies. You can't be going out and writing on people's walls. You need to express yourself through art. You need to go to school. You need to listen to your folks. But he's talking in total cool slang, and I can't repeat that. <laughs> but if that's not inspiration, I don't know what is, right? It's organic. We're not organized. We're so disorganized, we get things done. And a lot of things, as you can see. From 16th Street has come a uh, international mural festival that happens every year. We're in our, going into our fourth year called Paint Phoenix, Al Roker's throwing down. That guy knows how to rattle can. <laughs> mm. And we are getting notice from all over. PR company, no. Well, now when you talk about eating on 16th Street, we have some of the best cultural experience in town. We have some of the best food in all of Phoenix. We start my restaurant. That's not my food. That's from the mariscos. There's like four or five different mariscos. I've been working on a map, a culinary map for 16th Street because tourists need to come to the real deal. We have it here, why hide it? Think about it for a minute. They need to come and experience los sabores de Phoenix. You know, my American dream is different than other people's. Uh, I don't have a lot of money. I really don't. I spend it as fast as I can make it. You guys probably don't want to hear that. But, you know, this is what it's about right here. Mangos, tacos, cultura, keeping it real. Come to 16th Street. You can get everything you, you want. We are a tourism factor in Phoenix now. When the Super Bowl comes, they go to 16th Street. When something happens, they all go to 16th Street. They don't even call it 16th Street, they call it Calle 16. This is how far it's gone. Um, you know, this means nothing to me, I have to say this. Uh, to continue the fight, you know, I'm a lesbian, and that's very important to say that out loud because there's such inequality in so many different ways. It's not right, man. It's just not right. We all have a right to be. And most importantly, we all have the right to be a community because it takes a village 
I believe it really does take a village. I don't know who put that there, by the way. <coughs> um, I've done a lot of work. It looks like my tattoos, I swear. But this right here hurt the most, and I know now that I should have gone to ASU and gone to your school of business, and maybe I wouldn't have had that. Instead, I've learned from the school of, I, will not, I would rather die on my feet than live my life on my knees. I don't sell nachos, but I'm still here standing in Obey More Restaurant, right? So I thank you because I'm still protecting my culture as the promise that I made to those ladies in Mexico. Thank you very much.